All right, so welcome everyone to our alumni speaker. We have Shreya Mishra today with us and I'm gonna let her introduce herself because she knows herself the best. Hey everyone, I am so glad to be here. It brings a lot of memories from when I was a student at Cal State San Bernardino. Um, and so thankful that all of you, um, you know, I'm sure you have a lot of classes. Um, this is not going to be another boring session that, that you're gonna have to attend. So we'll make it as interactive um, as possible, but I'm so thankful that you're here and uh, let's see, let's see how we can help each other. I'm so excited to know, um, you know, what are some of the things that you guys are interested in um, as well as feel free to ask me questions. Um, to start, a little bit of a quick intro. So um, as Kristen mentioned, um, I was uh, a student at Cal State San Bernardino. Um, I graduated actually nine years ago, but that's okay, 9-11, it's the, it's the same after a point of time, believe me. <laughs> but um, yes, uh, I have a lot of memories from this college because right before you guys joined, um, I was telling Kristen that it was how I came to the US. So I came to, you know, I came to the US from India uh, with all these big hopes of like becoming an MBA, making it big in the industry. Um, and that's how I entered CSUSB. Um, and, and I did my MBA, my field was marketing. Um, and I graduated in June, 2012. Um, and since then I've been working. So, so that's what, that was part of my, you know, journey, um, uh, CSUSB definitely has been a very integral part of that. Um, so I'm thankful for all the classes I took, for all the professors who helped me uh, get through it. And uh, right now I'm actually working with Amazon Web Services. Uh, I'm part of their uh, worldwide application integration team and I work as a go-to-market specialist. I know that sounds like a lot of words, but uh, so what is it exactly that I do? I actually lead the go-to-market motions for a service known as AppFlow, uh, which is sort of like an integration service between SaaS applications um, and AWS. And it helps customers looking to get data from different applications uh, so that they can have all their data in one place and kind of like process it, make intelligent decisions from those points. So in doing so, uh, it's my responsibility to kind of work with our customers. What would be the right approach of taking the service to the market, um, which is literally what go to market means. Um, so, and, and then, you know, I know like next question immediately is like, so, this is what you do. Can you tell us why? Why did I pick this field, or or you know what is it that interests me here? Um, the short answer is, I wanted to be part of like the cloud computing, which is like the buzzword all of us here. Happy to talk about it more, but I really want. I, I really think that um, this is the future, right? Cloud is the future. You all must have read that, heard that. Um, it's all over, you know, so so I wanted to be at a place which is super dynamic and kind of like it, it gives me a lot of opportunities to not only work, but also grow my skill set and learn a lot, which is why I was super interested in this field. And I'm going to stop right here because I did a lot of talking already. So, you know, uh, that's that's all about me. But uh, I want to make this session about you because you're investing your time here. So let's make the session about you. Why don't you uh, tell me what would you like to know um, some of the questions you have and I'll see how best I can help you. Don't be shy guys. If you want to, if you're not comfortable um, unmuting yourself, you're more than welcome to type into the chat and I can uh, share your questions. Hi, I have a question. Hey. Yes. Um, what was the most challenging part for you um, as a recent grad transitioning into your career? Um, 
Definitely a lot. Uh, that's a great question, by the way. Uh, uh, so a couple of challenges, right? Um, even before I hit the challenges of like the industry, I actually hit the challenges of an international immigrant. So obviously trying to get through like how things are done here, it was a completely new space for me. Um, things operate very differently uh, in India. Um, so I had to learn about that process very, very quickly. And the way I did that was um, one thing from my personal guidance that I can tell you all is, don't be shy to reach out to alumni, to, to your friends in the industry. You would be surprised at how helpful people can be. Um, and really, everybody has, almost everybody has gone through that process of like the hardships and, you know, knocking on the doors of companies. So they, you know, don't be embarrassed to kind of ask for help. That was a big thing that I had to come across because I, first of all, did not know a lot of people. And then I was like, hey, you know what? I don't know if, you know, everybody would be ready to help me. So, but people are. So um, reach out to them. Also, um, one thing is when we are a recent graduate or when we are in, in college studying, our focus is really, really one dimensional, right? Like probably at least like most of us have not even heard of these words like go to market okay what do you do like what is that um so if you have a particular um area or field that interests you i would suggest that try to kind of like find people in that field and try to kind of ask them because i know like mba marketing for example is one degree you would be surprised at the millions of jobs that are available within MBA marketing. So like, you know, try to learn about all the, all the different types of jobs that, that might interest you. you. You never know what kind of a job uh, or, or field might actually capture your interest as well as your expertise, if I can say that, right? Like market research can be one thing or, um, Field sales can be another thing or account management can be another thing. These are all very, very different and they're all like super fields and they all come like nobody teaches you, uh, you know, there's no degree in, for example, MBA sales, right? But um, it might be something that is of interest. So one big challenge would be uh, for you to explore what area you are interested in. And for that, my suggestion would be reach out to a lot of people, alumni, friends. Um, second, I would really say, um, try to be up to speed on like where the market is going. There are fields that are, you know, kind of like um, that existed, but you know, they are no longer like that dynamic. So think about whether you want to be in a place which is like a dynamically changing environment, does that interest you? Or you're more of a person like, hey, you know, I operate in a certain way, I want like a, a certain pace, uh, because de depending on what you like, um, that should be your field or your kind of like industry of choice. Also like there are millions of industries to choose from, right? Are you more of a tech person? Are you more of like a fashion person? Are you, you know, is your area of expertise more in like, let's say um, research or does healthcare interests you? And you can be, let's say, taking the example of market research, right? You can be a marketing person in any of these fields. So um, these are, and these are hard, like these, getting this research is hard. I have a question. So um, <laughs> I know that you you mentioned that you wanted to be involved in like uh, cloud services and web services and things like that. Do you have only business degrees or do you have other degrees relevant to that type of tech industry or did you go and get outside certifications to um, make up for anything that you were lacking because you have an MBA instead of maybe like a, a computer science degree or something like that? Uh, so the interesting combination is that I do have an engineering degree. <laughs> My bachelor's, I graduated as an electronics engineer, which is why um, the inherent interest in the tech field, because, you know, that's the um, sort of a little bit of a, a goofy side of me. Like I like to, you know, uh, be involved in the technology segment. I do a lot of reading about it. Um, I also have like an engineering background, so I understand technology a little bit. 
better than sort of, let's say, other industries. Um, so I was glued to this side of the world. Um, having said that, so these are like the professional um, sort of college degrees, right? An undergraduation in um, a bachelor's in engineering and then a master's as an MBA, right? But then other than that, for example, I also, I did some certifications on my own just to learn more about like technology. So I did a um, training in my free time on like Salesforce. I want to learn about it. Um, you know, what is it all about? Or I would just kind of like read up a few articles um, and see like, okay, data analytics is something I enjoy. So that was a course, you know, and, and I have seen, I have seen how far we have come along, like things like you have Coursera and all these other places where you can literally like go and learn and sign up, you know. And so I would really say that um, the material is there. It's about what interests you. So I did like some certifications um, in, you know, customer analytics and things like that, which which interested me. Um, here uh, at Amazon, I wanted to learn more about the cloud, so I kind of like studied for the cloud practitioner exam. So so, a ton of information is there, uh, as long as you know what you want. But yes, sometimes uh, it can be actually a need that you actually require a particular certification to enter a field. So that's almost like mandatory. Uh, but most of the times um, it makes sense to like learn about these things. If you are planning to be part of something, at least know about the base. Um, having said that, just um, having a lot of certifications is no guarantee of your success um, or your knowledge is something I, I would really say out loud. Um, it's all about these certifications are there, there to help you know more, but there is no guarantee that if you have, if you are somebody with like 20 certifications, then you are better off with somebody who let's say does not have it because it's all about um, your interest and how much you want to learn and what you learn from the certifications. So like some courses are really helpful. Some courses are just there because um you want to advance in one particular field. Um, and then some courses are there just to give you like that base or the foundation, which is which is lacking. Okay, awesome. Uh, we have a couple questions in the chat. So the first one is, um, were there any MBA resources or services that you found personally useful? Um, and related to that is, was there anything that you did outside of the classroom to help facilitate and move your career forward and uh, lastly, how did you balance your time while doing all of these things? All right, um, I'll answer that question in actually three parts. It's a big question. Um, so uh, before I answer that question, a little bit of like a background story is, um, I started my MBA back in India. I was telling Kristen, um, so I prepared for uh, the MBA colleges in, in India and just like GMAT, we have another exam called as CAT. Um, and then uh, I got into one of the fine colleges uh, in the country. And there I remember um, the, the, it was in Mumbai uh, known as KJ Sumaya. And uh, I kind of like was part of this uh, uh, consulting group, you know, because I wanted to kind of like, other than my studies, I also wanted to work on like real life projects. So there was this consultancy group that was there in the college and we would actually go out and, and get some um, real life projects from, from industries. Um, sometimes we would just like do it for free just because it helps us. So if you have a chance to be part of like these groups or if you actually don't have that group here, then now like you, you can always like, be the one who forms it. And um, that helps um, not only because you, you are learning all these things and then that sort of gives you a real experience in the field out there because believe me, what you're learning and when you're out in the field, in the real world, it is different. So you get a chance to kind of like uh, apply whatever your learnings are and practice them more in a, in a real versus real environment if I can say that right of that India story was because my graduation at CSU SP was pretty fast like I came in September I took a lot of courses and I graduated with my class back in India in June um, so um, I did sort of like 
use that time in India also to kind of work on these projects. In here, uh, in San Bernardino, I actually did internships. So I did like, um, you know, in the winters, because I knew it was off, I, I did an internship um, and I did like market research project because even if you are like not working on something concrete, one thing is when you are sitting in a room with people who are bringing in five, 10, 15, 20 years of experience, you just inherently learn so much from them. Just even if you're learning things like, forget about like your actual subject, even if you're learning things like how to put across a conversation, how to, put, you know, if there is a customer, you just observe how people are talking to the customer or how people are like talking to the executives. That itself like takes a lot of the learning from you. So, so I would really say that go do, uh, you know, like try to get as many internships as you can, um, try to have these groups um, where you can actually while you're working, take on these projects. Um, and then uh, I kind of like also in my summers, I took this training with Salesforce because I was like, I just want to, you know, before I get a job, I want to learn more about it. So all that really helped me. And then also like, I was always there to reach out to my professors. Um, and they were great guides at telling me like how and what is needed what is it that I can learn more or focus more? So that's another resource. Um, and then how did I balance my time? Uh, that's a good question because uh, I kept myself busy uh, while I took so many courses and internships. But for example, I really, the thing is, you don't, in, you don't realize that you are kind of like super busy when you kind of enjoy what you do, whether it's your studies, whether it's your work. Because I was enjoying my internship, it didn't feel like, oh, I didn't get a break because I used to love going to that office every day and, you know, like making relationships there and then coming home. And then I used to like be like, okay, so this is what happened. Let me see if I can, you know, learn this aspect for tomorrow. So it never felt like, oh, my window break is over and I never had the time. Um, and I realized it a little bit later that whatever you're studying is actually going to, don't treat that as a subject because it's not like when you're working, it's not like, oh, this job applies to like statistics. So today I have a lesson on statistics that I'm going to use. And tomorrow I will be using a lesson on project management. Believe me, it'll be like all at the same time. So if you learn these subjects as subjects, then it's going to be very difficult for you to kind of correlate how this mechanism applies in the real world. But if you learn these subjects as like, an example, like for example, if you're if you are taking a course in project management, and then you're like, okay, so let me see what I studied. How do these people apply this in there? You know, when you're doing that, that's exactly what you need to absorb when you're going for your internships, for example, because then that subject becomes more understanding, uh, you know, and more interesting because you you know why things are done or taught to you in a certain way and. Not everything that you're going to be reading in your books is going to be applied as is. The, the world changes every day. So uh, that's a foundation to you. But you need to apply that foundation according to how you are going to work. So, I mean, for me, that whole time balancing act was like, okay, I'm just going to like, I just like doing, doing these things. And I'm going to spend my time doing that. But then, yes, I did party as well. I did enjoy a lot. Um, that's very, very important that you take a break uh, so that you don't lead yourself to exhaustion. So I would not discount that fact. Karan, did you have a question? You can speak yeah. up. Yes, uh, I have a question for you. As you said, you were an international student from India and I'm also an international student from India as well. I did my undergrad from the CSUSP. Then I got encouraged to do MBA in marketing. With mm -hmm. University. So I would like to ask you, what was like after graduate after your graduation, mm -hmm. how, how difficult it was to get the the job position that you are right now, or like what did what most thing help you to get there? Um. So yes, uh, it was difficult because also 
And, and that is precisely why I'm here to help you because I did not leverage this resource, right? Like today I have, let's say I'm here to help you. You'll be hearing similar sessions from a lot of other people, which is what brings me back to the point that reach out to like alumni, make connections and, and reach out to people and ask them how and what is important and, and you know, like what are the different fields available to you? Um, I hear that you are doing an MBA in marketing. So like marketing itself is like a huge, 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 it's a whole world altogether, right? Are you, are you more interested in like advertising? Are you more interested in brand management? Are you, do you want to be like, you know, uh, product marketing you want to go like sales there there are tons of opportunity like research or or um you know field sales so try to learn a little bit about what you want to do and then try to find people in that area who work um it can be your friends family alumni you know even strangers even friends of friends um so that will really help you to get a perspective uh, what was the most difficult journey from for me personally is because at the time I was like pretty new to the US. So like I did not know a lot of people. And then I did not even have that guidance given to me by somebody that, hey, go out. Right. So that's why I possibly may not have like made the most use of my connections. Um, but that is the learning that I have over the years. Would you say that internships helped make it a little bit easier for you to get a job after graduation? Internships did, yes, they do help. Uh, and the reason they help is because um, if you, so a lot of times internships actually convert to full-time opportunities, right? Like that's how a lot of uh, my other friends got into um industries because they did internships. Um, also, one thing you guys uh, can explore is um, a lot of these companies have internship programs where you sign up, you, you interview, you become an intern in the company. And then if you like really do a good job, it actually successfully converts into a full-time position. I would really say try to explore that opportunity because um, that opportunity is literally like standing right outside your door. You don't even have to go and hunt anywhere. Um, also, because I wrapped up my MBA pretty fast, um, I had lesser time to understand. Um, so I only attended just one or two career fairs from the college, but I would encourage you to actually attend those because again, that is something the college is bringing you at your doorstep, right? Like you are there, the college is bringing you those connections there. So um, have an elevator pitch ready why would somebody want to hire you? And 10 seconds, if I were to ask you why, why would, what is it in you that you would contribute to me? So the answer should be framed in a way that why are you going to be useful? It should be your story. Don't make it like generic because everybody is generic, right? If it was generic, I could have like, there are, there are 10 other people who can have the same generic story. So what is in it that you will bring for me? So try to like focus a lot on your strengths and pick up like one or two strengths to wrap in that elevator pitch so that when you are at these career fairs or when you're talking to people in your internships, you can really position your unique value. Like this is what I am great at. And this is the problem that I realized your team or, or your project or your, you know, this field has. And this is how I propose a solution. When people like, when you come to them, that you're going to be helping them with a the solution, that is your USP. That is why people would want to work with you. If if I'm going to go somewhere and I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm here, but you know what? I will not actually be much of a value add to you. There is no point of people hiring. Awesome. Uh, we have a question in the chat. Uh, what are some of the concepts learned in the program that you currently use on a daily basis? Uh, examples are given of interpersonal communication, strategic thought process, things like that. Um, believe me, one of the most used skills that I learned was prioritization. <laughs> the art of prioritization is really, really valuable. 
So we don't learn it. Like there's no book that, there's no course on prioritization, um, but definitely try to kind of like see how you can do that, um, which also goes back to like uh, the previous question about the balancing of time act, right? Because it's all about when you're working, there will be multiple things that you need to juggle with. So um, uh, yes, so one of the things is learn how to prioritize. Second, people often say that it is actually time management. I like to call it a little bit differently. And this is something that I actually learned from my sister, believe me. Um, it's not really time management. You're not managing time. You're actually managing your task. Time is there and it's going to be there. You are actually managing the tasks in that time. So uh, that's how I like to think of that concept. Um, one of the important things I remember, uh, so one of the courses I, I really liked was um, like international business. When I was studying it, it did not actually sound uh, to me as interesting, but uh, now when I retrospect and I think about it, it is one of the most valuable um, uh, classes sort of, right? If I can say that, that I use because uh, I work, uh, I, I've always been part of global teams. When you're part of global teams, you need to like work with people. Um, things like, so your courses as a whole are going to teach you about concepts, different concepts, right? Market research will teach you how you, you analyze things, right? Statistics is going to teach you how to actually do that analysis. What, you know, like the, 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 the logic behind it, the algorithm behind it. Um, so what I will say is treat these courses as like, they're going to be parts, plugins to your, to your work on a day-to-day -day basis. But what really is helpful is, um, as is correctly mentioned there, right? Strategy, strategic thought process, like thinking on your feet, um, relationship building. These sound like, um, you know, you'd be like, why am I doing an MBA if I were to learn these things? But an MBA is preparing you for concepts in your field, right? It's giving you, uh, like if you are doing an MBA and let's say HR, I've taken the marketing example way too much. So HR, people who would enter that field, they would know what is the field all about, what are the different kind of like things that an HR manager needs to think about, so on and so forth. So your MBA, treat your MBA as your platform on which you're going to stand but from there onward, how you need to kind of like walk on that platform, how you need to kind of position your platform, those are things like um, relationship building, strategic thinking, thinking on your feet, right? Um, and those skills are equally important because an MBA will bring you to the door, but then from there on, it's these concepts that are going to take you forward. I have a question. Yes. Um, have you ever experienced imposter syndrome? <laughs> Every day. Every day. And um, I treat that as a good thing. Because if you, and this is, this is actually just my opinion. There is no right or wrong theory. So you can take it how you want it. But this is purely my opinion. I think that the fact that I have an imposter syndrome actually means that I am thriving in a place where I am like surrounded by great individuals. If I don't have the imposter syndrome means either that I'm not learning or that I'm in a group of people where I am the best, which means there is no place for me to grow. So, so I really think that if you have the imposter syndrome, it really is, it is a good thing for me because that means one, yes, it kind of validates the fact that I'm an A-game player. Two, it is important for me to learn. And the fact that I get a feeling that I don't know enough is you know, good because that means I have space to grow. That said, very, 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 very important to distinguish 
there's a thin line between having the imposter syndrome and the willingness to learn and the you know like that little bit of a feeling that you don't know a lot versus being underconfident so i do not support underconfidence at all like you should be really confident in what you are doing who you are and where you are with kind of like that um space in your mind that okay you know what i i'm great at what i'm doing but these are the things that i can learn so it's good to have imposter syndrome but it's not good to be underconfident that's an excellent explanation of that <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have questions? These have been some great, great questions that have been going on. Questions about history or your personal journey, advice, anything like that? Nothing? So you started as a software engineer, right? Yes. So that, that must be pretty different, you know, going from software engineering to, to MBA work. Yes. Um, how how has that that how have you found that background and and suspect particularly that logical programming uh, uh, understanding impacted what you're doing now in a positive way or a negative way? Great question. So um, having come from India, it's uh, at least when I was this is like I don't even want to count the years uh, because it makes me feel old. But uh, like when I just graduated as a bachelor's degree, right? The 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 standard sort of route is okay, bachelor's done, get into one of these companies, right? Or if you're a math student, the standard the standard route is okay, you took maths as your subject in your eleventh and twelfth grade. That means you need to get into a bachelor's degree. That means you need to get into like this tech field, which was a standard route. Um, but I would really say that. I'll try to answer your question by actually answering it in a different way. One, I will let you know why um, I actually took engineering and how it helped me today when I'm actually not an engineer. So I took it because, so I, I, I function as like, uh, part of my brain is like very, very logical and like analytics driven. I still, I love anything to do with numbers even today. Like, um, you know, I, I am in the strategy field, but I love dealing with numbers. And this is really what my understanding has been formed over the years, because a lot of times they, they are not different, right? Like the, we, should, we think of strategy and numbers as different, but believe me, there is no strategy if you cannot justify it with numbers. You will not be able to kind of like build any business if you don't have like the data behind it is how I, I like to put it. So at the time, it looks like, OK, I, yes, I did engineering. And then I realized that, OK, I, I like numbers and I like computers and programming, but I want to be also using that creative side of my brain. Uh, I want to kind of like use those skills that I have. So I wanted to be in a field which is more like uh, business oriented, strategy oriented, uh, which is what led me to do my MBA. Over the years, I realized that they actually, it helped me. Um, first, I used to think in the beginning, right, very early on that if I had to do an MBA, why did I ever, 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 you know, learn software engineering? But working in a tech field, having that base and that background really helps. So I'm actually happy about that decision, which is also part of like my learning over the years, maturity, whatever you want to call it. But that is the reason why I think that the fact that I did engineering really helps me, one, use my analytic side of the brain, um, justify my um, strategy with numbers. Like I, I have that habit of like always putting up the data behind it because of that analytic side of me working. And then three, because I learned all these skills. So I know that I'm not an expert there because I did not continue with, uh, you know, like the uh, software engineering side of the world. So I am no expert, but just because I was exposed to that side, I have like these basic coding skills that, that I can use on a day to day. So sometimes it helps me when I don't have to like rely on others to help me let's say pull data for me or write a SQL query, I can just do it by myself because I know um, by way of that little bit of the work that I did. 
So it seems like you were able to leverage your background into a -hmm. field that you wanted to be involved in, um, even though you didn't move into engineering. So that's awesome. Um, Okay, so we have another question. You mentioned that you did Salesforce and Mm -hmm. other certificate courses. Did you use Coursera for getting those certificates or um, what other websites or sources would you share? All right. Um, honestly, there, there can be tons, right? Like um, I might not even be exposed to them because if you go online today, you will find like places, um, a lot of companies offer certifications just by themselves. Then you have like things like Coursera and Udemy. Um, so I utilized um, Coursera a couple of times. And again, this is no way, like I'm not trying to favor any of these websites here, but I did use Coursera uh, uh, at the time to just you know sign up for a few certifications. Um, I did a training in Salesforce as part of like, I remember, I mean, this was 10 years ago, but I remember working with this group of um, uh, consulting, companies and and you know they were offering some training on salesforce and i was like okay fine i'll just go and sign up um then uh for the cloud practitioner um be, you know that is part of my role so um i signed up for that once i um was uh part of this team at amazon um uh, but i'm pretty sure you can like try to look it up if you are interested in that so resources are endless also certifications are endless you don't just have to do everything try to choose what you like and how relevant it is going to be in the field that you want to enter that's a great suggestion Um, i know that there's so many different certifications out there and it's not always necessary to have that certification if you have the understanding and the knowledge Um, to do that. And not all certifications are built the same. They could be very, like you mentioned, very specific to your company. Um, So if you're looking for a corporation or a company that you specifically want to work for, find out, go on. I I always tell people, go on LinkedIn, find the person that's doing the job there you want, and then find out what certifications they have, how they got it. And And also some of the things, right? Like, for example, I realized uh, in my previous job, um, I was doing a lot of like this data analytics work. And then I was realizing that, hey, you know what? Um, instead of doing it in this way, why don't I use like R, right? And I did not have like a lot of knowledge on R, which is when I was like, okay, let me just try to learn it. So I enrolled in a course, you know, um, I tried to like, so don't just, my advice would be, don't just enroll in a certification for the heck of it. You're not gonna gain anything by having like a, you know, framed certificate. even. Some things you you can just enroll from a learning perspective. Like I wanted to learn R, I just enrolled in the course. And I was like, okay, I'm going to learn R because I want to use it in my work. So look at it that way. So for example, let's say, let's say purely from an example perspective, let's say you're somebody who really enjoys um, doing analysis. And let's say you're using Excel. And let's say you're like, hey, I'm using basic Excel but I want to learn, um, let's say macros, then just go and learn it, right? Um, That would be my advice. Or for example, if you're interested in, for example, cloud. So just learn, if you wanna learn about cloud, then you can research a few, either universities who offer courses or companies who offer courses, just to learn about that skill or technology. And having said that, just a course or a certificate is not actually going to give you the whole knowledge. It's going to, again, uh, you know, connect it to my previous point. It's going to form the platform. Like when people talk about it, it will not sound completely different to you because now that you've learned or read about it somewhere, a little bit more than just reading an article on it, you would be able to relate. um, What are they talking about? Uh, but then apply it, like try to use it. Um, that's going to kind of like brush up your skills more. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Um, any more questions we have today or anything else you'd like to share with us? I would wait if there are any more questions. 
before we had for for such a small group we've had some amazing questions going yes. on so that's, that's been excellent it's been really awesome um just to share with some of that stuff um we have been exploring i know that you had mentioned a consulting group so i've been sending out recently opportunities for um case competitions to students that's amazing um, so we've we've been getting some more of those there's been a lot more virtual things you don't have yeah. to have to go and present in person um, yeah. so getting a lot of those opportunities i feel like those are also a great way to share um, a one that I'm going to be sending out to everyone's student email tomorrow. Um, the top winners, everyone on the team gets a guaranteed internship next summer. Oh my uh, God, that is yeah. amazing. And casing is like, um, so I learned it later, by the way. Um, casing is like literally how you would be asked real life questions in an interview. And it's a great way for you to practice it when you are in college because more or less all of us have like at the same time the same level of skill the same level of experience and the same sort of like we're in the same classes so the same understanding of things i mean barring a little bit up and down but uh, it gives you so so you know it's a great way to kind of like um improve your speaking abilities improve your com you know confidence as well as thinking on your feet because it, it is literally like how you would be sitting in an interview and it gives you the practice of uh, real life projects because nobody is going to kind of like ask you that, hey, can you create a pivot table for me? Uh, or like, these are the 10 numbers. Can you create one of those star diagrams using, you know, any of the computer programming languages, whatever. People are going to ask you like oh, real life uh, questions. Interviews are not like created out of the blue. They are the questions that, that are asked are asked because those are the things that either the team or, or you know, the project is kind of like working on and they're facing. And also uh, they would want to know your perspective on how, how would you kind of like answer or help them. So they are actually created out of the real life work. And casing is a great way to make you think um, of these real life examples. So I would highly, 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 highly recommend that. It's a very low risk environment too to check out all that stuff in. So yes. you know, you're not. It's not a risk of not getting. The I, job. I wish I, I had done that. Like that's one thing yeah. that yes, I I totally missed out, and I wish that I had done that. Yeah, it's it's been something that I've been exploring and I'm I'm very happy to send that out to to the students and get everyone involved in it because it's it's a great way to apply the knowledge that everyone's yes. getting in the classroom into actual real world scenarios and and network with other mm -hmm. people that are competing with you and yeah. and help and do all of those things in different industries and they're in comp the first one that uh, case competition that we have going is in the banking industry. The next one is for a pharmaceutical company. Wow. Um, so completely different industries, but still wanting to talk to MBAs, still wanting MBAs to apply yeah. and do their case competition. So um, there's so many opportunities out there like that um, to go and compete. And the one that has the free internship has a very large prize for winners and That's also right. has zero dollar entry fee. That's that's so, amazing. Um, I would really recommend everybody here to make full use of this opportunity. Uh, plus, that there is no wrong or right answers. Like the thing you need to remember when you are in interviews or you know when you're talking to people is it's not always like there is a right and a wrong answer. There is like your perspective, like how how close your perspective helps somebody solve a problem. How close your idea helps, how close and how fast and how, how efficiently you, your response helps towards like completing a task or solving a problem. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, you know, a two plus two is equal to a four, right? That's, there is no, uh, so, so casing is a good way because you will also get to hear other perspectives from people. Yes, definitely. Awesome. Um, any more questions we have today for Shira while she's here and she has this great information for us? Anything else, anyone, or any last things you'd like to share with us? No, I would just like, um, I would really say um, all of you, the fact that you're here, 
that you're doing an MBA already kind of like up level you, um, you know, so try to focus on your skills and be very, be very much aware of your weakness. There is a reason why companies ask you the question of like, what are your strengths and weaknesses? And believe me, uh, you know, try to focus on like some real strengths and real weaknesses. Like um, it's very understandable when people say that, oh, I'm a perfectionist and that's a weakness because, you know, like honestly, you're trying to like portray a strength as a weakness and that that doesn't work. So so focus on your strengths and and try to not have a conflicting strength and weakness. And the reason why I have so much emphasis on these two things is because if you know your strengths and your weaknesses, that is how you will position yourself. That is how you're going to bring your USP to the table and make yourself valuable. Um, and then whatever you're learning today, try to think of what is it that and how is it that you're going to apply it to the real world. So uh, if you're learning any, like if you're doing a market research and there's a question in front of you, try to actually think of the problems that that industry might be facing, read more about it, just then answering the question. It will make your assignment more interesting, as well as you will really learn something that you will not forget. So um, that's a little bit of a piece of advice. Make use of like all these casing uh, competitions and resources that are available to you. And then feel free to just reach out to me, reach out to a lot of other alumni, um, try to build those connections. And again, when you're reaching out to any, anybody, right? Uh, always try to kind of be concise on what are you looking for? How is it that you're reaching out to somebody, why, why, why should they help you? What is it that you're looking from them, right? Instead of just saying, hey, I need help, like with what? So, but, but feel free to make connections and always be confident, always be confident. You will always be somebody in the room who knows less than a lot of other people, but then you're also that somebody who knows a lot more than a lot of other people. So have that confidence in you. Um, but don't be overconfident, please. <laughs> have that confident, but uh, try to make use of the resources and the connections. And yes, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'd love to help as much as I can. So if you think I'm the right person, this is the field you want to be in, I'll be glad to help in whatever way I can. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much for your time. This has been very informative and um, I know I'm sure that we'll have a couple of our students reaching out to you. Absolutely. Um, so have a wonderful evening, everyone.